Well, good morning everybody. Welcome to another video. Oh, if I can extract myself from the mud. <laughs> Welcome to a lovely morning down the River Wye. It's a nice colour. I'd say we've got about two foot of visibility, which bodes well because I'm planning on doing some trotting today. Looks good for it. I wasn't sure what colour it would be. It's sort of a middling sort of summer height. It's running off a little bit. Just priming this swim to have a go in it later. I think we'll go and have another look at another swim a bit further up that I know. We're after barbell and chub on the float today. That's the plan. Right, we'll leave this one perhaps for hour or two we'll nip back put a bit more bait in we'll prime it up for a few hours time i'm the only person on the stretch today so well i was off as of uh, four o'clock this morning i checked when i left home it's about six now and yeah i'm looking forward to this we'll have a cracking day hopefully fingers crossed right let's get up to the little swim and we'll have a crack up there and then we'll come back down here a little bit later on What we've got is basically a bit of a depression in here, only six inches or a foot at the most. And some rocks across that far side there, about my sort of 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. There's some boulders across there. And some barble tend to live in there, quite a few barble. So what I like to try and do is bait up this sort of bowl area in front of me here, just with some hemp and some mixed pellets try and draw them out that's the idea especially as we're trotting what I'd like to do ideally in here is get much further out but I just I simply can't today as you can see <laughs> this is about the extent of where we can get to it's about a foot higher than ideal really Now pellets wise, what I've got is just a mixture of all sorts of everything. There's the odd six mil one in, but they're mostly four mil to sort of 2.3 mil. I've got some halibut pellets, some cheesy garlic halibut pellets. I've got some uh, sticky baits, the krill pellets. I've got some shrimp and krill pellets. I say all different sizes. I just want to get the fish grubbing about, get them to realize there's a bit of food there. I'm, I'm spreading this about a little bit as well. I'm hoping with this bit of colour in the water it might help things along a bit. We'll keep that going in. I've got some cubed up meat there, half inch cubes, which is going to be our hook bait. We might go on pellet, but I do tend to stick with meat. I also don't really tend to feed meat either because uh, it just doesn't sink very fast. Right. Grab the rod. We'll run through the gear and uh, we'll have a crack, I think. Lovely overcast day today. It's very still as well. That's what prompted me to come really. I booked this last minute. Um, they did forecast a, a still day with lots of wind recently. They forecast a still day today and an overcast day. So perfect conditions really. As I say, looking at this, we've got perhaps a couple of, couple of foot of visibility. I can see my knees just about. So guys, gear wise for today, uh, I've got my usual standard trotting gear with a slight twist. Um, I've got my Tournament Pro, Dower Tournament Pro 15 foot rod here. Drake Alloy Stem Stick Float on there. And a little bit of a change. I'd like to say it was intentional, but uh, I forgot to put this on here. Although my other reel's in the car, so it's not a problem. I usually use a Abu 506 Mark II closed face reel. I changed it over when I was thinking about doing a bit of trotting on the Avon um, to my 125M. Now, uh, for those of you not in the know, and they're both close face reels. These uh, one, two, five ones, they haven't been made for years. So this is an older one I picked up off eBay. Seems in great condition. Hopefully it'll cope with some barb if we catch, if we catch any. I can always nip back to the car uh, and put my 506 on, should I need to. They're not really designed, of course, close face reels, not really designed for, for catching huge fish, um, but they are lovely to use, absolutely wonderful to use. So. I do like using them. I am going to have a go with this. We'll see how we get on. Keen to get going. I've not been in a massive rush to get going. 
Um, she's been getting ferrying the stuff out there, but uh, do you fancy a crack now? So uh, let's get down there. All right, we'll keep these pellets and this hemp going in. So I reckon it's around about five foot in here. Now I've not gone into huge detail on this setup because um, I made a video over on the Fishing Tips channel, our sister channel, detailing this rig. So I'll stick a link for you up there, up there. <laughs> so you can go and have a look exactly how I tie this up, should you wish. Exactly how I set up. I'll put the information in the description below as well. Right. Let's run through. What can we do? Oh, it's not very warm stood in here, I have to say. Right. Let's see if I've guessed the depth right. <laughs> you know, ideally, when we're fishing the stick float, I'm going to be able to hold it back, but of course, because I'm casting across, if I do hold it back, all that's going to happen is it's just going to swing in towards me. So what we're going to have to do is drag bottom a little bit with the Olivetta to slow up the uh, slow up the bait. As you can see from the Olivetta to the float, we're about four foot, something like that, just over. So that's about how deep it is out there. Not really much deeper than where I'm stood, to be honest. But it is rattling through out there, which it isn't doing here. <laughs> yeah, we just, just, float just popped up then, which tells me the Olivet's just hit the bottom and that's around about where those rocks are over there. I think we're probably decent depth at the moment. We'll play around with it. Let's see how we get on. We in? We are. I thought I had the bottom then. Oh, I can't get that. to reverse off. We are in. Well, first fish of the day, that third run through. It feels like a job, but blimey, just pull in then for a minute. Just went down where those rocks are, where I expect it, where I'd expect it to go down anyway. <laughs> sure it is a job. Well, it's kiting in. Not giving me a beating either, so. I'm sure it is a job. Let's scrap though. <laughs> Come on. Certainly is Mr. Chubb. <laughs> God, it still hasn't given up. This water's quite quite chilly, it's quite fresh. I say they've had a they've had to freshen up these fish. There we go. It's about that <laughs> cracking, very lean fish, and well, that's cracking. Wonderful stuff. Right, I'm going to have one more run through in here, but for whatever reason at the moment, this is just not working. We've had one and a half chub, <laughs> a chub and a, and a little one. Getting very few chub bites. In fact, I've only had those two, I think, which is quite surprising in here. It's generally good for a few bites. Not massively surprised we haven't had a barbel bite after an hour. It's been about an hour we've been fishing. But it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right at the moment in here. We'll keep trickling the bait in. I was going to give it two or three hours in here before we did anything, but... Clearly, the fish are not on it at the moment in here. I'm sure there are some marble out there. But for whatever reason, they're not having it at the moment. So I think it will pay us to, to rest it. 
We'll rest it up. We'll keep the feed going in. We'll grab some bits and we'll, uh, we'll perhaps get off and have a go at that other swim that we baited up. Much steadier running here. Should be able to present a bit better. Certainly a rod length out. we we'll hold this float back a bit. We need to. I don't think it's particularly deep in here. There we go. Is that the bottom? Is that a fish? Bottom. Wow. A couple of bites in there. A couple of hook fish. One landed. That's been it. Bit, bit surprising. I think we'll do the same thing here. We're gonna have a, gonna have a move. We'll put a bit more bait in here, and then we'll have a little uh, a little move. There's another swim or two to try. So as you can probably see, we're on a croy here, which means we're oh, a good couple of rod lengths out into the river. means we can trot off the rod top down that foam line there a lovely crease although I've not found it particularly productive in the past he's not asleep that's for sure what's this we in we are in oh blimey <laughs> thought it was the bottom again It's quite an in like a chub. We're catching the bottom a lot around there. There's some rocks in the water. Big boulders down there. I've been, uh, been tripping under quite a lot. I thought it just tripped under again there. I'll be a bit careful in here. There's a lot of snags in behind this croy. I'll keep his head up. That's a reasonable fish. Trudging around. Oh, that's a bit better. A bit more like we uh, what we came for. Cool, that's a proper one. God, blimey. This is a proper one. Come on, in you come. Got him. And that's a proper one. <laughs> so, guys, how's about that? Absolute cracker. That's, that's a good five pounder in the winter, all day long. Quite lean at the moment, but uh, that's a cracking fish. <laughs> Very happy with that, as you can imagine. Wonderful stuff. That's more like what we came for. <laughs> right, with that little twitch, we'll get him back. <laughs> there we go, oh, lovely spot there. In the flow, but not in the strong flow. We'll give him a couple of minutes. Wonderful stuff. Right, you have a rest up there. I'll let him go back in the slack of water. <laughs> they don't want to leave us. Come on, chap. Back you go. There we go. Fab. So, guys, we're back. Right about 15 20 minutes off. Just moving back round here and sorting gear out etc and while i've been up the bank something huge crashed out right where we were uh, baiting up or where we baited i should say i'm hoping i didn't see what it was hoping it was a barbel not a salmon <laughs> and it may be that the fish have perhaps got on this feed There we go. Just felt that pull round. <laughs> Shove again, I'm sure. A reasonable fish. Crack it. <laughs> Chubby head thumbs. 
think it's a bit more like we came for. And I pick them up with one hand. Just about. <laughs> Cracking. That's wonderful. Oh, you wanted that, blind me. That's a good sign. There we go. Cracking fish. Off he goes. Well, let's say we're getting a few bites now, which is good. I thought we were in the bottom then, and we're not. We're right in amongst those rocks I was mentioning earlier. And this thing is just holding that. Making me give him a line. Which I don't really want to do. It's so like I say, over by those rocks over there. <sighs> Blimey. Sorry guys, we've gone a bit quiet. I'm trying to get him away from those rocks over there. Without much success so far, although we are gaining a bit now. Breathe a bit easier now. You know, we've gained a bit now, certainly enough to get him away from those rocks. It's in mid-river now. Well, there are, there are boulders, but... Just the odd one, rather than a big craggy pile of them. Well, we certainly know what this is, don't we? A bit previous, but there's a net. One of those moments you suddenly start thinking, do I leave the net up the back? <laughs> well, this could take a few minutes. I think there'll probably be some editing in this fight. <laughs> this fella feels a serious fish. And lines complaining. Certainly is a barbel, I think we knew that. Make sure I'm not going to go over the top of these waders. Oh, I'm certainly not reaching for the net just yet. Well, looks a nice one. But my arm is certainly telling me it's a decent fish. I think he's a monster. He certainly a decent one. I say I'm I'm not gonna reach for the net just yet, because I know he'll uh, he'll fool me. There we go. Looks ready now, doesn't he? <laughs> there we go. One look at the net and he's off. Got him. <laughs> Cracking. Well, he's a nice fish. He's about five pound, I'd say. Something like that. Cracking. Right. We'll give him a, a rest up. Get him in this slightly faster water. There we go. Head up in this faster water. We'll give him a few minutes and then we'll have a look at him. <laughs> Probably about five and a half pound. Maybe pushing six, somewhere around there, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Epic scrap. 
absolutely fantastic as you can probably see behind me and probably here the canoes have just about started they're all uh, going past gobsmacked what have you caught let's have a look <laughs> and it's uh it's cracking that's that's cracking and hopefully the first of many fingers crossed <laughs> so it's had a good rest up it's raring to go I'll stick his nose out in the flow gone he's hanging about was he that's fantastic made up with that especially made up as we landed that on the uh, on the Dower 125 that's my first ever barbel on a, on a Dower 125M close face reel so very happy about that bizarrely as I say it's supposed to be overcast all day we had a bit of rain earlier and now the sun's coming out <laughs> there you go <laughs> well certainly doing something right as I say, we ran it over to those rocks that I was talking about earlier, over there. And that's where it went down. It's gone down a hundred times there already. And each time I have to just fiddle it through. And that time, it didn't come back up. I say what I generally find that's my Olivet. I'll just demonstrate here. This Olivet is, is tripping along the bottom. Imagine the, the surface of the water is the riverbed. It's tripping along the bottom and the float is going ahead of it. This is tripping bottom and it will catch. What happens is the float will sink under. If you hold back, I feel the float flutter, fluttering like that in the current. And usually by holding back, it'll pull the Olivet out. Sometimes it doesn't, in which case I'll give it a little pull and that generally pulls the Olivet out. And when that doesn't shift it as well, that's generally when I give a bit of a strike. As I say, if you, if you strike every time the float goes under when you're fishing like this, and you'd be striking about every five meters run of the float. <laughs> it's just a case of just fiddling the float feeling it through the swim i think it's after an hour or so you, you know pretty much where it's going to go down but that generally tends to be places that you get the bites as well <laughs> so often catches you unawares because the place when it's the olivet's catching in the bottom around the rocks that's where it's most likely to get grabbed certainly by the barbel That was a bit of a funny one. Yeah, I was going to say, that the float came right out of the water that time. I don't know if you'll have seen that. The float came about two inches out of the water. I just thought, that's, that's, that's not the bottom. And it's trying to get in those rocks again. God, blimey. Oh, what's this? Oh. I think we got these barbel out on the munch now. This could well be another one. I'm not I'm not sure it is because it's been doing some head thumping. It could be a decent chub, but it's starting to get to the point now where if it was a decent chub it would have given up. And this isn't. Well it's literally been about three or four runs through since we had that last one. I'm guessing they're out on the munch. God, it's, it's just suddenly gone solid. Absolutely solid. Can't be snagged. There's nothing down there for it to be snagged in. Still not convinced it's not a chub. I don't think it can be, though. It's kiting in like a chub would. Maybe it's a slightly smaller barbel. See, it's kind of given up now. I think it might be a chub, you know. It is a chub. Blimey. If I like half a chub, it's going to be a good chub. Got to be a good one. Yeah, it got me in the weeds, look. Cool. 
Well, I can hardly pick him up. <laughs> that, that is why uh, we'll get him in the net. That's why I thought it was a barb. Oh, blimey. What a scrap. He's off again, look. Absolute monstrous great chub. I did think it was a bit strange if it was a barbel that the, the float came out of the water as if the fish had grabbed it and and swam up in the water. Well, I do know chub are big when I can't pick them up with one hand. I can't get my hands around them. Then I know they're decent fish. And I can't pick that one up with one hand. Wow. What a scrap that was off a chub. I say, he really had me thinking he was a barbel. Well, we'll have a look at this uh, this tank <laughs> before we put it back. Absolutely cracking. How's about that? Wonderful stuff. That's absolutely epic. Brilliant. What a scrap. Nice on his head there. I'll relieve you of that, mate. Seems to just latch onto the forehead of Chubb. Life. That's cracking. Really thought that was a barbel then. <laughs> really, really thought it was. Well, I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this, I have to say. I did this morning think it was going to be hard going, and it's still not easy. As I say, we're not getting lots and lots of bites, but we're catching some cracking fish. So I certainly can't complain. I get asked fairly regularly how much bait I use in a day. A day down here, and by day I mean from sort of six in the morning till six, seven at night. I'll probably get through a couple of pints of hemp, probably the same in mixed pellets, and somewhere between sort of two and three tins of meat. As I say, purely as well, because like I was saying earlier, I literally just shove the hook into the meat. So it comes off pretty much every single time. That's a bite then. You know, don't push it through or twist it or anything like that. I mean, literally, what I do is... I'll show you that. Literally, I'm just pushing, pushing that. It's hard to do around the wrong way. But I'm just pushing the um, meat onto the hook like that. And that's it, literally. And I love that as well because there's no hook showing at all, as you can see. So there's no way on earth the fish can see the hook because it's buried in the meat. And I've got fluorocar fluorocarbon hook link on. So in theory, they shouldn't really be able to see that either. Which should be hard to see. And like I say, it will come off every single time, but for me, that's bait in the swim. Of course, the difference with it coming off the hook rather than throwing it in is when it comes off the hook, it's right down at the riverbed where I want it rather than throwing it in. And it just takes so long to sink. We'll have another few minutes, then we'll give it a rest, I think. The best thing you can do to get a swim going is baiting it, and the second best thing you, you can do is rest it. I don't think hammering this swim to death is going to do it any good. Once again, we'll put a little bit of bait in and then leave it for an hour. All right, guys, we're back. The second swim we fished. Another little go in here. Just wondering if anything's moved up over this this bait we put in. It's about uh, twelve thirty lunchtime now. We've uh, had a reasonable morning. It's not been epic by any means, but been. Uh, been been reasonable as I say it 
Red that barbell and a couple of decent chub. A few smaller ones. Hopefully we can have a few more. Well that was a pull. <laughs> I just slowed that right down then. Again, it doesn't feel massive. But it's another fish. Just thinking of having a move, to be honest. Just thought, oh, it's just not happening here. Perhaps they just want it really, really slowly. Better fish, better than the last one, anyway. Oh, that's a, that's a much nicer fish. Oh, wow. Yeah, perhaps we will stick it out here a bit longer. How about that? <laughs> Wonderful. That's a cracker. God, you wanted that bit of meat as well. Perhaps they are here and I'm just not doing it right. I still want it much, much slower. These are lovely fish. Go on that way. It goes off under the tree. <laughs> So guys, come back to the Croy for a little go in here. Someone's just leapt out while I was here, didn't see what it was. But, uh, fish are certainly showing a lot more than they were. There we go. Right, I was holding it back. just behind those rocks. Hopefully this one stays on, feels a decent fish, although difficult to tell in that flow. It's certainly just sort of hanging there. It's shaking its head a minute ago. I thought it'd snag me up, but it's moving. Perhaps he had tucked me in behind those rocks. There's no monster, but he's putting up a good scrap. Cracking. Trying to get under the rock next to the landing net. God, what a great scrap. Come on. Got him plus weed well no monster but this one's worth having a look at again I'm not holding them over this concrete I'm holding them over the water got the net suspended over the water cracking that's wonderful right let's get him back well guys just getting back out of the water <laughs> as you can see <laughs> thought that might happen again again not sure if it's a salmon or a barbell I'll have to look back on here didn't look as big as the salmon that was flying out earlier. Maybe these barbel crashing out. So I have seen them jump out in here in the past. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed they're out, out from those rocks and out and about. <laughs> oh guys, final push. Well, I say final push. We've got, in theory, we've got about six hours left. But uh, so I'm probably going to fish till maybe six o'clock. So we've got about three, two and a half, three hours left. So there was about six inches less water on here. I'll be able to get right out there. <laughs> this gets just too deep enough for me not to be able to get out there in these chest waders. <laughs> Typical. Probably push it a little bit. There we go, that's a bite. <laughs> He's off. <laughs> if 
over the other side of the river. It's quite rocky over the other side, as you can see, as well as the rocks in the middle, so I'm not going to give him anything. I'm sure it's a chub. And they're trying to get me in the rocks. <laughs> Typical chubby tricks. I turned him away from the rocks on the other side. He's now trying to get in the rocks in the middle of the river. And every weed bed he can find as well, I'd imagine. I'm assuming it's a, it's a chub anyway. It's a barbel, it's not very big. But he's not doing typical chubby things. Oh, he has kind of given up, so I'm sure it's a chub. It certainly is. Oh, it's a nice chub as well. I don't know why he was uh, putting up a decent scrap. Oh, I just nicked him in the corner of the mouth there. Cool, another tank. How's about that? Absolute tank. I can't hold it in properly. <laughs> let's, uh, let's have a look at him like that. How's about that? <laughs> Cracking. Wonderful. The summer sun. Right, let's get him back. <laughs> I've eased off the feed quite a lot. Just because they don't seem overly bothered, like I say, they don't seem massively in a feeding mood. So I say I've eased off a bit, I'm just putting some in about every, maybe every half an hour, every hour. Just to get that smell going in the water again. From the oil coming out of the hemp and obviously the pellets as they dissolve. a bit further upstream than I've been and that just went away straight straight under <laughs> Chubb must have been sat there and dropped it on his nose yeah not a good scrap fighting well today this Chubb no monster Again, just nipped in the mouth there. Just nicked. God, we nearly didn't land him and he might come off. <laughs> He's trying to get between my legs. There we go. <laughs> I felt that. It's <laughs> a long way down. I was really holding that back hard. <laughs> come and snatch that it's so far downstream that I could hold it back without it coming in <laughs> cool it's off well I'm sure it's a chub blimey just put a tail pattern up on the surface charging charged off into the middle of the river It's not giving me a beating, so I'm sure it's a chub. That was lovely. I was just holding that back hard and just felt the rod tip go thump, thump. <laughs> really, he's just sitting in the middle of the river. We are making on him, but... I say he's not 
really doing the chubby sort of trying to get in the edge and all the rest of it. Or, although he is banging his head like a chub. <laughs> Another cracking fish again, just, just nicked there. Look in the top lip. God, God, another clonker. Again, we'll, we'll then look him and have a quick look at him. And if he, if he clears off, he clears off. How's about that? Absolutely cracking. Another clonking fish. It's another good four pounder. Fantastic. In the afternoon sunshine. Interestingly, we've we've had very few bites up here where I've been feeding, or sort of down there where it'll be settling. They're all over the place. Like I say, it just tells me they're not really, they're not really feeding hard. We're winkling bites out, we're making it work, but they're really not having it at all. Perhaps they'll switch on a bit. I was wondering where the chub were, but they certainly uh, certainly turned up now. Cracking. Yeah, that that bite was a long way down. We're talking probably 40, 50 metres. I let it run right the way through and I just really held it back hard. He nailed it. That's really what we need to do in here. I just can't. I'm sure we'd be getting more fish if we were doing that. Because there's not too much visibility in the water, I'd say about a couple of feet. The slower you run it through, the better. If you can't slow it down, you need to just land it on their nose as you're running it through, basically. We'll try the holding back hard trick, see if it works again. <laughs> That's a bite on that. Well, it's disappeared. I don't think it's a fish. Oh, it is. <laughs> well, I see some chub holding down there. It's nowhere near as big as that last one. I felt two little thumps. You're right. You've got one on there. I have. <laughs> Little chub by looks of it. I haven't. It's a brownie. <laughs> That's why it's going nuts. <laughs> Little brown trout. Well, guys, a brownie. My first brownie ever on a bit of lunch of meat. <laughs> right, now I know that we're not supposed to be catching them and that's why we use lunch of meat, but uh, we'll have a quick look. There we go. That's about that. <laughs> Lovely brownie in the, uh, in the afternoon sunshine. Cracking. Right. Back you go, fella. No worse for his ordeal. Fantastic. Well, that's first for me. Brownie, I'm trotting the, the Y. As I say, they're not renowned for their uh, love of lunch and meat, are they? Brownies. <laughs> Still love another barbel before we go. But if we're, we're only to catch one today, then so be it. Great would be lovely, but uh, not great conditions today. I can now blame the sunshine. <laughs> it's got a bit windy as well, I can blame that. <laughs> to be honest, I've had a cracking day. A lovely surprise of a brownie. Chub! <laughs> I must have got, had, getting on for 15 now, I reckon. Completely lost count. Certainly more than a dozen. 
and that cracking barbel, of which hopefully there'll be a, uh, be more. I think generally to get barbel and a float, you've got to get it just right, and it's just not today. It's not at all just right. Certainly helps if they're up for a bit of a feed as well, which again they don't seem to be today. You know, we're not catching really over the baited area, we're catching all over the place. Which tells me the fish are not actually that bothered. I think the fish I'm catching, I'm catching purely because I'm putting a, a bait right in front of their noses. And it's too good to turn down. Oh, it's a fish. I thought we had the rocks again then. Oh, hello. <laughs> Been feeding it though through those rocks. <laughs> feeding it through. I was just thinking of having a break. Oh, it's a canoe coming. I think this might be a barbel. Hopefully they'll go over the far side. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to make big on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's not very happy. <laughs> Give him a poke with that oar. <laughs> yeah. Right, danger averted, guys. This is this is no chub. This is Bob. He's just hanging there. Hot in my mouth, <laughs> as I'm sure you can imagine. <sighs> Certainly was when those canoes were going past. Just trying to keep them out of those rocks that we know are over there, and but I was having to get the rod down low. I think we've made a bit of line on him now, so fortunately, we got him away. I think, yes. Just in here, look. Wow. God. As I say, just running this meat down to those rocks. Both the barbell bites we've had have been in those rocks, so they're clearly not coming out onto this feed. If they are, they're ignoring the meat when they get out here. Again, we won't reach for the net just yet. It's coming relatively nicely. Assuming it's a barbell, I'm sure it is. It's giving me a right beating. It's a monster chub if it's, an, if it's, a, if it's a chub. in that I think we're a million miles away I'm more can use we're uh, hopefully I think he's, he's getting ready Wallowing. Come on, chap. 
Are you ready? Oh, it's another nice fish. Got him. Oh. We got him. Oh, cracking. Well, guys, he's, he's had a good rest. <laughs> so he's pretty lively. We'll try and have a look at him. Hopefully he won't clear off. <laughs> How's about that? That's a cracker. Absolute cracker. It's a good six pound, isn't it? I should think. Somewhere around there. That's cracking, cracking fish. Absolutely wonderful. Mint condition as well. Absolute beaut. That's fantastic. <sighs> Over the moon with that. Said I wanted another one and we've had another one. I'm a happy chappy. <laughs> fantastic. Right, we're getting back in this net, resting up before we get him back but yeah that was uh, an eventful fight with this canoe going past <laughs> always like to try I'll get this get him out there before I start waffling always try on the Y to get the rod up in the air to keep away from all the rocks that are on the bottom especially out there where I'm catching these fish these two barbels certainly there's a there's a load of rocks over there I spoke about it earlier and um I just try and get straight back in, of course. And uh, so I like to keep the rod up to try and keep them off the bottom and stop them getting underneath these rocks. And uh, unfortunately, that's canoes and they were quite close, so I had to get the rod down. Because with the rod under that much pressure as well, um, the line, you know, one touch from an oar or the bottom of a boat, you know, a sharp plastic edge and it's all over. That's cracking. Absolutely cracking. Cool. We'll have another quick quick look at him, shall we, before we put him back? How's about that? <laughs> cracking. Wonderful fish. Right. Back you go, fella. Let him get his breath back. He's had a good rest anyway. Wonderful. Smiling like a Cheshire cat now. <laughs> Whatever happens now, I'm happy. <laughs> right, I'm going to get out and have a drink. With that, we'll have 20 minutes, half hour. Up on the bank. Have a drink, something to eat. Then we'll come back do another hour, perhaps. I think it's probably around half four-ish. And that is pretty much, I guess. We've put a little bit more bait in, but I don't think they're interested in the bait today, to be honest. I think we're we're putting the we're putting the, the bait to them and that's why they're taking it. That's a lovely fish, they've been a nice stamp of fish as well today. That'll do. Right, let's go and have 10 or 20. <laughs> so guys, back in the water. We've had, uh, we've had about 20 minutes or so off. Just had a bit of a drink and stuff. I had to check, check the time, it's about quarter to five now. So I think I'm gonna give it till six. But to be honest, whatever happens now, I'm happy. We had a couple of barbel, it's been fantastic. Plenty of chub, some decent ones as well. So, certainly not complaining. Whatever we catch now is a bonus, to be honest. No! Oh, Just had a bite down there. <laughs> if we could get out there and hold this float back, we'd get so many more bites. <laughs> I'm holding back hard down there, just banging away at it. <laughs> oh dear. Never mind, can't complain. It's not been easy, but it's been very, very enjoyable.
Well, the geese are making a move by the looks of it. I think I shall be. I think we'll call this the last cast. It's my, my 25th last cast. But uh, it's not been particularly productive since we had that barbel. As you've seen, we've, we've had a couple of modest sized chub. Had another one that came off. And that's been it. Alright. <laughs> Can you believe it? Last cast, last run down. Just saw the float dip a little bit. <laughs> I feel very chubby. There's a reasonable fish though. Well, can we uh, can we catch one on our last run through? Hopefully. <laughs> God, I'm really bending this rod. Blimey. It's kiting in, so I'm sure it's a job. I'm trying to get this tree, I would imagine. Ah, oh, no, 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 it certainly is. Come on, out, out. Oh, no, 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 right behind me, trying to get under the bank. And nothing else around there you can get into. Whew, just about turned him. Now he's trying to get under, me, under my feet. Trying to use me as a snag. <laughs> well... Last fish of the day. Well, hopefully we'll land him. It's giving us the right run around. It's a nice fish. God. Again, just nicked in the top lip. Course, absolute bruiser. We'll need the net for this one. Well, hopefully we can hold him up and have a look at him. <laughs> it's about that. <laughs> Absolute tank of a chub. Fantastic. And what a way to finish the day. Absolute unit. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Cracking. Last run through. <laughs> and that wasn't set up, I promise you. That really was my last run through. Although it's my 25th last run through. But that's an absolute tank. <laughs> Look at the length of it. <laughs> my index finger's by his mouth. He's, uh, he's up by my armpit almost. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. That'll be a proper, proper biggin in the winter. Wonderful. That's it. That is it. It's been absolutely fantastic. I've had a cracking day. Really, really enjoyed that. It's not been easy at all. It's been tricky trotting. The fish haven't really wanted to play ball. You can just tell they're not really up for it. Not particularly caught any fish over the feed. It's been more picking them off here, there and everywhere. Well, as you've seen. But uh, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. That's been an absolutely wonderful day. And to finish off with a specimen like that as well. Over the moon. We've had, I would say, somewhere between 15 and 20 chub. A couple of three real nice ones as well. And those two fantastic barbel. My Dower 125M has held up fantastically well as well. That's a, another plus for the day. But I'm going to make a move at that. That's, that's brilliant. As I say, I'm back down here again in a few days at the weekend to do some guiding. So hopefully that day we can have as good a day as I've had today. It's been fantastic. Now I'm planning on getting out on the Avon the next day or two. Um, Weather's supposed to be still, so I think I'm going to get the waggler gear out, get over the Avon on my uh, my neighbour's stretch, which is nice and deep, and we'll see what we can do on there. Have a nice mix bag on there, hopefully. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that half as much as I did. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support, and I'll see you all again very soon.